Sergeant Electric calls Tom Lano. Sworn. You saw me swear a firm tell the whole truth and nothing but you to the best of your knowledge? I do. Please be seated. Morning, Mr. Lamb. Good morning. Uh, and I want to thank you for the report and also thank Mr. Solinger for this courtesy uh, for you, uh, for your family situation. Thank um, you. With respect to what we're going to do here. Uh, please state your name for the record. Thomas Paul William, L A I N O. And how old are you? I am, I'll be 56 this year, I'm 55. Okay. And are you currently employed? I am. Um, and by whom? Reclamere Incorporated. Uh, and what is Reclamere Incorporated? Reclamere Incorporated is a gun security service. And what does uh, Reclamere do as a data security service? One of the functions is providing computer forensics. And how long have you worked for Reclamere? Since 2007. Um, and Your Honor, if, if, uh, if I may, I'd like to uh, turn to exhibit uh, 99. Okay. Uh, as the curriculum VA. Uh, for Mr. Lamb. <laughs> and if you have some of our concerns about time here, Your Honor, I obviously want to make sure that you understand enough about Mr. Lamb uh, before we talk about his report. I thought this might uh, help us to dive the sure. background. Uh, now, everybody there? Mm-hmm. Uh, Mr. Lane, are you there? That's uh, important to you. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks, Paul. Uh, with respect to uh, what has been marked as Exhibit 99 in the binder, uh, can you identify this for the work? Yes, it was nice Did you prepare it? I mm did. -hmm. Uh, and is it accurate, as you understand it? It is, but it was one thing that was brought out in the deposition of the Administrative of Justice and Administration of Justice. Okay, uh, but other than that typo, this uh, deposition for your curriculum uh, VK's action. It is. Uh, now, uh, you mentioned you've worked for uh, Rector, and I want to come back to that in a little bit more detail. Uh, but I also want to uh, take you back to your days at Penn State and then uh, what you did before you uh, became an employee of Rutgers. So, uh, did you go to college? I did. Uh, and where did you go? Penn State University. And did you graduate from Penn State? I did. Uh, in what year? 1980. And with a degree in what? Administration of Justice. Uh, and following Penn State, uh, what did you do? Uh, I went to and I got employed for the Pennsylvania State Police in 1981. Uh, and, uh, what did you do with the Pennsylvania State Police? I started out as a as a trooper, uh, moved to the rank of corporal, and then uh, held some faculty before me. Okay, and uh, if you look at your curriculum uh, tag, uh, we can see uh, that uh, you have been employed. Uh, your uh, curriculum detail also shows. Uh, as of January 1987, your promotion to the rank of corporal. What I wanted to do was focus for a second on uh, your uh, duties with the Pennsylvania State Police Department uh, from June 2002 uh, through April 2007. Uh, can you describe that period and uh, what you're doing? Yes, first of all, the state police is all the information. I was a computer. Uh, crime investigator for the Pennsylvania State Police. Uh, and for that entire five year period? That's correct. Um, and can you describe the report uh, the types of computer investigations that you handled uh, while you were with the Pennsylvania State Police Department? Yes, my area of silence that included seven different counties uh, surrounding uh, my, my home base and my station. And my area of responsibility was 
$600 of training, or at least some subpart uh, of that $600 of training in the city of curriculum VK. Mm -hmm. uh, and would that be uh, the list that uh, we could uh, see and review on pages two through uh, four? Mm -hmm. uh, Your Honor, given the circumstances here, I'm not going to run through okay. all of that. Uh, I'm going to talk about 600 hours and things like that. I do want to point out a couple of uh, what we think are significant professional certifications for the court. Sure. Uh, now, uh, and two, uh, in particular, uh, there are in the list of professional certifications, Mr. Lano, that you identify on uh, page four. Uh, can you describe uh, generally what those certifications signify what type of uh, qualifications they would suggest you have? Yes, sir. They, they, they are listed uh, six of them sorts on there. Uh, the two most important ones are the certified computer forensic examiner, the CFCE, and the case certified examiner, the DNCE. Uh, and you say the two most important ones, uh, important in the context of this case? Yeah, I think they're important in the context of, of my qualifications. Uh, the A class network plus uh, uh, CE. Yes, the CS that are very small. So I have a certain sense that I think the two men are more than one is Okay, and uh, what's the significance of the uh, certified computer forensics examiner certification? That's a certification that in my organization, my uses IA, CRS, International Association, computer investigators, specialists, and tenants training. Uh, and in broad terms, describe what you asked. 
employee by employee analysis of those devices. Each device is analyzed separately. And in your report, do you summarize on an employee by employee basis the findings that you made with respect to each of these devices? I would. And with the indulgence of the court, I'd like to now turn the witness's attention to page 7 of the report, where I would like to show Mr. Lanham various identities of laptops and then quickly run through findings. Now, Mr. Lanham, we turn to page 7. Do you see the frame laptop? I do. And when you receive the frame laptop, can you advise the court of what you did? Yes, there were certain files in the Windows system that would identify the USB devices that were connected to that specific laptop. And how do you determine that a USB device has been attached or connected to a particular laptop? The Windows registry will keep track of that, and there are software that will access that registry and report those findings. And is it as if a list of sorts pops up that allows you to understand what's been connected? The software will be available for you to see that list, yes. And the software was what again? I didn't refer to the software. I'm sorry. No, I didn't refer to the software. For instance, the registry browser. So using registry browser software, and is that software that's well known and recognized in the industry? It is. And you've used it routinely, is that right? I have. And with respect to your findings as to USB devices that had been connected to the frame laptop, have you also focused in for this purpose on particular dates of interest to Sargent? Yes, that is to report all USB devices attached since October 1st, 2013. Now, with respect to Mr. Frame's laptop and your utilization of the registry browser, did you have findings? I did. And do they appear in your report? They do. And do they appear here on page 7? Yes, page 7 contains a condensed table of the same information that you can find in the appendix A. Okay. And so that we know you are, I think this is a moment where a detour would be helpful, just so we know the various attachments that we're going to be moving back and forth between in a minute. Have you just referenced attachment A? Is that right? I did. And can you identify or explain quickly for the court, what's the significance of the sequence of attachments A through, I think it's K. Can you describe for the court, Mr. Lanham, what's the significance of attachments A through K? What were you trying to depict through those parts? A through K are a list of the USB connected devices to each of these analyzed laptops and desktops. And we're going to also be looking at attachments L through R. What is the significance of the attachments that appear here, L through R? L through R is a list of the information we're about to discuss today that most recently used and most recently in office documents. And Your Honor, I'll address each of those in detail once we start getting into the detail of each of them. Okay. Now, with respect to the frame laptop, is there a 
come up with a list, Mr. Liam, of the devices that were connected to the Frank laptop during that relevant period of time, October uh, 1, 2013, until Mr. Frank's departure. I will. Um, and uh, where is it? On page 7. Uh, and uh, can you uh, quickly run through for the court uh, what are you uh, depicting here? Because uh, we have different highlighting uh, and some of your uh, columns are not highlighted. But can you describe what are the devices and what's the screen of highlighting? Yes, sir. The, the device is the computer show the eight different devices being connected one by time frame. A lot of those devices is the serial number for each device. And then the analysis status gives uh, whether or not I was able to uh, conduct the analysis or not. If you see the two darker highlighted, uh, USB devices, they were submitted for analysis and I analyzed them. The lighter shade, the light shaded uh, WD passport, WD passport uh, was identified as a starting IP number. If it was not highlighted, then that device was either not returned as starting or found in their uh, workspace. Um, but connected to the laptop nonetheless, correct? All of these devices were connected, yes. Now, the, uh, the WD My Passport. 070A uh, was returned and you were able to analyze that, correct? Yes. Um, and the WD My Passport 0810 uh, was returned and you were able to analyze that? Yes. Uh, and the WD My Passport 07A8, uh, is that a reference to a, a connection from the uh, Sergeant IT Department? Yes. Uh, and if you look, uh, and then the ones that have no highlighting, uh, do those reflect devices that were connected? We do. Uh, and be able to analyze those? No, it's not. Then why not? Because we're not returning a slider, we're going to work first and provide to make that analysis. Now, uh, with respect to the uh, two uh, USB devices that uh, were uh, returned. Were you able to do an analysis on? I'm uh, sorry, an analysis on those. On um, those. And uh, is there a place in your report uh, that uh, reflects what you found on the two devices returned? There is. And where is that? Page fifteen and page sixteen. Okay. Let's take a second then and turn to page. 15. Uh, and as we go to, let me ask you this question. Uh, again, the background question, Mr. Leo, to set the stage for uh, some of the testimony to come. If you just reference uh, a, you're talking about a uh, USB device, right? Uh, and uh, with respect to the registry ripper uh, is actually a, a sentence below here. Uh, is there, it says the frame laptop registry was analyzed using the registry ripper. You see that? It's on page seven. I'm sorry. Oh, really? uh, that's a word that I thought maybe we should stop and describe the word. What's the registry ripper? Registry ripper is a software program which I use to uh, identify the Microsoft Office files, the most recent ones. Okay. Uh, now, uh, if we uh, then turn uh, to page 15, which is where I think we were, uh, we're headed, uh, there is a reference to Passport 070A. You see that? Yes, um, And uh, is the uh, WB My Passport 070A uh, something that you refer to in this report as a unique device? It is a unique device, but I don't know And I want to make sure that that's clear as we proceed. 
Um, is or how are USB devices uh, identified such that you can keep track of uh, the distinctions between them? I mean, you know that uh, one is one and two is two. So. Yeah, so the device is going to be identified by one word and product, uh, but there will be a serial number of each device which will be unique to that device. Um, so we also do a volume serial number which will be the device, but that's not very unique because it could change. So the unique number will be the serial number that is embedded inside of the flash drive, if you will. And I'm aware of that. Former police officer, but is the serial number kind of akin to a fingerprint? It's the identity left behind by the USB device connected? It's not going to change. Yeah, so it's going to be a device for the right device, so it won't change. Now, uh, with respect to uh, this passport, then, uh, 070A, that's the uh, first device. Uh, reflected with this particular serial number, uh, and what did you find on uh, the uh, frame WD my passport that was returned? Found on that uh, passport also were were three quarters in good contents, uh, but the three main quarters and uh, two and three and seven quarters were in the C drive. Contacts and desktop. Um, and uh, with respect to uh, your finding uh, that, that this uh, WD, my passport that uh, was uh, returned to Sergeant, uh, had uh, a C drive on it. What's a C drive? The C drive is the drive that we would open up your, your laptop or desktop in a mess. The accessible drive where you, you write uh, your documents to and your operating system resides on it, and it's usually accessible. And uh, typically, what kinds of documents do you find on a C uh, drive? You're going to find uh, uh, program documents and operating system documents, but more importantly, that's where you'll find your, your username. And you do the desktop and you use the main document for the reason. Save your PDF files, your web documents, your Excel spreadsheets, your pictures, your videos. Um, and uh, as it relates to uh, contacts, uh, what's the nature of contacts generally? Contacts mean, at least I was with email, uh, uh, you would have a contact for a photo on your email, a very important. Generally, it means a, uh, a series of names, addresses, phone numbers, email address. And uh, desktop? Desktop is when you look at your computer and first you see this stuff, you authenticate and put in the password of your desktop, which has all your links to your various programs. Uh, so where the file you have sitting on there would be in this desktop folder. Uh, and uh, I wanted to ask you too, uh, what's the capacity of a device like this? If you look back at page 7, uh, in the USB device area, it, there's a parenthetical under uh, WD My Passport that says, 250 GB, which I think means gigabytes. Uh, can you describe for the court uh, how much information uh, could be contained on that size USB device plugged into a laptop? You are correct. GB stands for gigabyte. And my brain, the way we're talking about is 250 gigabytes. Generally, uh, a one terabyte or 1,000 gigabyte would be equivalent to 1,000 pickup truck rolls of paper. 1,000 pickup truck rolls of paper. So a 250 gigabyte, which is one fourth, uh, would be 250 pickup truck rolls of paper. Um, and uh, with respect to um, the WD Mike passport, uh, does your uh, 
0708 from Mr. Frank. Does the report reflect how and under what circumstances that particular device was returned to Sergeant? I don't believe the report reflects that, but it was a device given to me February 26th. Okay. And does the report reflect the particular dates when you obtained any particular laptops or USB devices? It does. Page 5 and number 6 identifies the devices that I received and the date that I received. Okay. So, and what we're able to do, Your Honor, this is probably the time we're going to start connecting dots during this direct. Can you help with the court with respect to the dates that you obtained these particular devices and the dates that you obtained the laptops? You know that we can find a chart that has all those on page 7. And we also know that we can identify these by brand name and by serial number from your chart. Now, we know all that, and now we want to know when did you receive that particular device? And you're saying you can go to pages 5 and 6 as to all the devices. And, Your Honor, my plan here is to go through each and every one of the devices. My plan is to summarize brand and boss. I mean, is there a disagreement that these are the devices that he got from the employees who left? Yes, sir. Yes, Your Honor. I'm sorry. Do you know specifically which devices? Every device that he has listed here, Your Honor, is one that we certainly want to have him be able to discuss. Right. I mean, so what's here and what's not? I don't know if there's any dispute about what's here and what's not. Well, the report says what it says, but I don't know. We can't, you know, without being more specific, I can't say specifically to, you know, what any of the information that's contained there. And, Your Honor, it's analysis of his analysis. Well, the devices themselves, is there a dispute that these were the devices that he got from the employees? Yeah, I mean. There is. The report just indicates that certain devices were connected, not necessarily that these devices belong to a particular employee, Your Honor. So, yeah, we're not going to stipulate that these devices belong to him. Well, the devices that weren't. Well, there's no dispute that these devices were connected, though, were there? We're not going to challenge the conclusions that these devices represented by serial number were connected to the computer. Okay, but who or what connected them? That's right. That's an issue. I think that is an issue. I mean, that ends up being their call to make, whether it's an issue. Right. If we don't think it is, if they think it is, then that's fine. He can't testify as to who actually hooked them up or not. I mean, Your Honor, you don't hear the testimony from people, from the employees who use these things, you know. Well, right. They don't remember plugging these things into their computers. They belong to them. Well, I've already heard testimony like that. Right. You've already heard that. So, I mean, the testimony that you're going to hear here is testimony that explains forensically why should the inference be drawn, right, that these individuals plugged it in, how do the computers work, what were these devices, provide you with a secure analytical basis for finding that we did, in fact, see these devices plugged in and that the only people who could conceivably have actually done this are the people who had these laptops. I understand. I have that. I understand that's where we're going with this. Okay. That I know. Okay. I'm just trying to see where we're at in agreeing with something. Yeah. We're moving this along a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think what we can agree to is that these devices set forth in the report 
were connected to computer systems that purport to be ones that were used by the people named in the report. Okay. I don't know if that helps, but... <laughs> it doesn't do much. No. Uh, well, but they were connected. I mean, they were connected to computers. They were connected to the computers. Right. And right. the inference right. you're trying to make is there was only certain people that could have connected. Yeah, so uh, it does help some. There's no question. Okay. So it, uh, as we sort of um, try to speed this along, we have a stipulation now uh, that uh, Mr. There are all the devices uh, that uh, Mr. Lamb in his report reflects as, as a result of his use of uh, industry acknowledged software. Uh, it says we're connected to these particular laptops. We're connected. Uh, if we have that, uh, then uh, that's helpful because okay. there's no dispute that that occurred. I think, like I said, Your Honor, I can dispute that the devices referenced by serial number were plugged into the computer systems that they did. And then the screw, who plugged them in? Yeah. Okay, well, that's fair enough. All right. All right which, in the end, may well turn in mostly to legal art. Okay. All right. So, so we can dispense with some of it. Yeah. Each. Okay. All right. Uh, now, uh, and the... The report, uh, you can make this broad uh, point that perhaps then too, Your Honor, uh, that uh, will they uh, stipulate uh, that uh, it is a fact what we have and what we don't, uh, that uh, anything that is shown in green uh, has been returned, uh, and anything that uh, is in Mr. Lano's report that says not available. Uh, for analysis means it has not been returned or uh, is missing in some way. Wow. Well, it's not available. It's really, really available to him. Right. Or to sergeant at the time. Or to sergeant. Well, we don't know where it's at. Well, no, I'm not going to do that. All, all this says, and I think all Mr. Lyons can testify to it, is it was not <coughs> provided to him for analysis. I think that's fair enough. I mean, why it was and where it is, you know, just you know, direct evidence. Right. right. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. And so, as I understand it, so uh, we've stipulated that, that his recitation and his understanding of uh, these devices were connected uh, and that they're not available for, any, for analysis stands. Yes, correct. Right. Mr. Kabat. Uh, that's my agreement. Okay. And now, with respect to uh, the frame laptop, uh, what we also want to do, uh, Your Honor, uh, is explain uh, to you uh, how to uh, understand the captions A and L. This would be uh, the relationship between uh, documents that are uh, most recently opened, that's the L, uh, and the list of attached devices. So if you could turn to that. Okay. Right. 
So this is the place where we're closing the frame last time. Between October 1st and when we got it. And uh, is the fact that each of these uh, devices is uh, listed in a uh, separate uh, box by serial number uh, your attempt to reflect the connection of unique devices? It is a reflection of the time of the distribution of the front end. And if you look uh, for a second and attachment L, uh, now, I uh, can you describe the password I know we've talked about most recently used uh, devices, but what what software did you, did you use, uh, and why do we have lists that run one through fifty for most recently used devices? The software we used was Red Lister, which is a registry from information that that it retrieved uh, was the MRU list, which stands for most recently used or most recently open office files. Office file is a web document, Excel spreadsheet, a PowerPoint program, or an uh, access database. And as I stated, it was listed in the last 50 devices. One of the last 50 uh, open files. So if you're looking at the time on page one, and we continue on page two, you'll see that name in the library item code. Those are the last 50 open uh, web document programs. So if this system is still being used and we only open up two more web documents, items 50 and 49 will be dropped off. So you, that's, that's the one that goes from the motivation is number one, and uh, uh, the last one is the last one. And so it's 50 for the different program. If you see on page 2, at the bottom it starts with Excel spreadsheet. I don't know how many parts that is as well. Continue on to the big one. And Mr. Fox, you know, is there a, a way well, let's, let's do a couple things. Just real quick, Your Honor, to uh, uh, explain how uh, you read uh, this, and then we'll uh, move to a couple of examples of the connection between, uh, no pun intended, I guess, uh, between uh, attachment L and attachment A. Okay. Uh, we, so, Mr. Lane, let's quickly describe the work. Uh, it, it, but let's just take first one we see, uh, item one uh, here at the top on page 106, and now we're on attachment L, page 106. And for the record, which it, it's been a while since I've mentioned this, uh, we're inside uh, exhibit 101. So Mr. Lamb, can you, uh, what I'd like you to do is just walk through item one through point 14, each of the uh, spots where we see the hashes, just so we understand well, what's the uh, MRU software trying to tell us when it identifies these documents. The, the MRU list you found in to also include the folder that it was found in. So we use another one here uh, as a, an example. You'll see right after one, one the C code. C indicates the as I described before, the C drive, the, the local drive that goes on the computer and goes on the networks. And then the, you can follow the folders, users, C drive, document folder, and then the last entry, the Thomas S. Frame dot DOCX is the actual file. That is followed by a name with the date in time that that file was opened up. Now the time is represented in UTC, which is uh, uh, uniform coordinated time. And so since it's reported on time, we have to take six hours off that time 
we would get it more time than one session. So that 17, 12 would actually be 11, 12 a.m. Um, and this, uh, Mr. Lano, the it's an odd acronym because it seems like the letters are out of order, but this uh, UTC time uh, for universal coordinated time uh, actually originates in French. Is that the starting point for the, the metric, if you will? It starts the same uh, place as the grammar of the grammar starts from, but with the time zones. And the time zone is saying we just report to the military time, um, and then you have to subtract the time zone. So we're, as we go through this to connect L to A, we're going to be subtracting C. I'll go there. Okay. Uh, and Your Honor, with respect to uh, the, the examples we want to show, uh, Mr. Lamb, uh, if we uh, go to um, attachments, Stay at attachment L, uh, and let's go to page uh, three of six. And if you would look on page uh, three of six at item 27, uh, and item 28, which is actually on page 4 of 6. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. uh, and if you look at uh, item uh, 28 uh, first, uh, what does that look like? Item 28 reflects the reopening of a file called copy of the estimate sheet dot XLX, which is a spreadsheet. Uh, that file was located on the desktop of P frame in the U before on this frame laptop. It was open on Thursday, January 16th at 4 13 p.m. Um, and with respect to uh, the 37, uh, to the, uh, the the second section manager. We were working on 413 point three seven seconds here. And if you look at item 37, I'm sorry, 27. Uh, so we're going back to page 3 of 6. That is the first page. Again, spreadsheet, when I made a copy of EPS machine that XLS, which is located on the E drive, which will be, which will indicate the USB drive, USB storage device. That was open up on Thursday, January 16th at 4.13 p.m., 10 seconds after the item was on. What's the significance of the 10-second uh, delay as uh, you uh, read item 27 and 28? This is what I, I would, would, would refer as to how this occurs. Yes. When the document is opened up, you can do a save as, and when you click the save as button, you can determine where that file is saved at. On this, is this example an external drive? And then when you put push OK, it will save it to that drive as well as open up and you will see the same sequence of, of uh, file field. Now, and with respect to this um, E drive uh, and that you reference to uh, a USB device, uh, is there a way to uh, connect uh, attachment L now to uh, attachment A and a particular USB device on which this information would have been copied? There is. And uh, can you uh, can 
referring to attachment A that was claimed for us on that day. Do you remember attachment A in which we attached USB storage devices to the front of the laptop? And if you look at the date, January 16th at 4.13 p.m., and go to page 202 of attachment A, the very first device is a USB 2.0 flash disk USB device, and the very first entry indicates that this device was connected to the front of the laptop January 16th at 4.13 p.m. Now, if we use another example, if you look at items 22 and 23, there is a 12-month project cash flow analysis, correct? That's correct. And if we try to connect these, could you do that? Run through that again. What were we at again? I'm sorry, Your Honor. You know, when I flip back, I'm sorry, I went too fast. You backed in? Yeah, I went back to attachment L, Your Honor. I'm sorry. I went back to attachment L. Okay. I'm there. All right. And now we're looking at items 22 and 23. I've just asked for you, Your Honor, Mr. Lane, to explain if you can, can you look at the power of Mr. Lane and connect it to a USB device on attachment A? Yes, items 22 and 23 are both the same items. One on project cash flow, or project cash flow analysis dot XLS. One is located on the e-drive or the external drive, and the other is located on the desktop or T-frame. And the date and time indicate a
the first one being on the C drive on the laptop and, and the second one being on the external device. If you turn to attachment A, page 202, you'll see that same device we had discussed earlier, the first one on the list. On January 22nd at 4.36 p.m., it was connected to the prime laptop. Now, at one last, uh, well, actually, two, two last examples. Uh, I'd like you to uh, run through items four and five. Uh, again, now, uh, Mr. Lano, I think you know we're going back to page three of six of the cat and help. Are you there? I am. Uh, can uh, can you, uh, do the same connecting, if you will? Yes, we. we Spreadsheet has the same name, a copy of D1404 Future Gen Bid Breakdown, on page 14. Uh, one is located in the My Document, Short Track My Document, Future Gen uh, 4, and the other is located on an external device. They were both open up Friday, January 31st, approximately. 22 seconds apart. And if you go back to task A, page 202, and look for January 31st, 1041 a.m., you'll see that the bottom entry, the USB 2.0 flash disk USB device, was connected at that time. And the last one, items one and two, which are now found on pages two or six and excuse me, uh, I think items two and three, I may have misspoken. Uh, items two and three, on uh, two of six and three of six. Could you do the connecting, please? Yes, yeah, the same following. One is located once again in my document show track board, general on the F or external drive. Both of them on Friday, January 31st. Uh, let's get another part. And if you go back to the Attachment A, page 202, January 31st at 10.43 a.m., you will see that that bottom entry, that USB flash disk, USB device, was connected to the phone off the laptop at that time. Cognizant of the hour is 12.25. Uh, I, I want to do the same thing with Mr. Boss, run through uh, a few on his computer, and I want uh, to ask a few additional questions generally. Uh, Mr. Lane, I'll anticipate that it takes another uh, 20 minutes. Uh, I, I can continue if that would be the preference of everyone, including you, or I could quickly finish after lunch and turn it over for cross, whatever's best. Why don't, we, why don't we do that? Let's break and then come back. All right. Take okay. 45 minutes. Congrats.